Wow. I think so many times the church places so much emphasis on the flesh instead of place, placing emphasis on the gifts that God has placed Jesus. in the flesh. Because if you focus on the development of your gifts, you ain't got time to do stupid stuff. If you're focusing on the development and the training and the equipping and the education of your gifts, if you're taking classes and you're bettering yourself, you're trying to go to real estate class and you're doing this, you don't have time for your flesh to run and to rule your life. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the things we have to think about is what part of our body or what part of our lives are we feeding? And welcome to the first episode of Dimensions with Jeffrey Golden. This podcast is really all about us having in-depth conversations so that we can grow in the knowledge of God and the revelation of Jesus Christ. I am really excited about our conversation partner today. This is a powerful man of God who I know you're going to learn a lot from. His name is Apostle Brian Meadows. He's the pastor of Embassy International in Atlanta, Georgia. This man of God is such a resource for revelation for the body of Christ. And so I'm going to ask you to put your thinking caps on and head with me into this powerful conversation with Apostle Meadows we're talking about how we can eliminate distractions and build intimacy with Jesus. Well, what's up, family? Uh, I am here with the one and only Apostle Brian Meadows. Uh, so excited about uh, this conversation uh, that we're going to have today uh, as we talk about removing distractions and building intimacy with Jesus. Apostle Meadows, how are you, sir? Man, I'm doing awesome, brother. Thank you so much for the invitation. I appreciate the space. I'm looking forward to having a phenomenal conversation. So I'm doing great. Man, thank you, sir. Thank you. And so so I understand that Embassy has moved into a new home. Really powerful stuff. Can you tell us uh, just a little bit, you know, really about that, how that happened and how things yeah. are going so far? Yeah, man. Me and my wife started a church in our living room in 2011. And it's been a journey. It's been 10 years of building, 10 years of plowing, 10 years of raising up prophets and pastors and mm. planting churches and covering and all this different kind of stuff. But, you know, through that time, the Lord really blessed us. We grew, we grew exponentially mm -hmm. and we just kind of outgrew the space that we've been in for the past six years. We didn't have any more parking space, no more children's space, no more sanctuary space. And so we started to believe God for a building. And for two years, we looked, we didn't find anything. And, you know, long story short, God just opened up the heavens through a supernatural just series of strategic events. And he opened up a 200,000 square foot facility, $23 million. Wow. And we were able to sign on it and move in with no money down. We just had our first service this Sunday, over 1,600 people. It was crazy. And we're looking forward to doing it every week. You know, our desire is to be the Disney world of revival centers. Our desire is to be an <laughs> apostolic house, to be a presence center, to be a place where people can be developed, where they can discover their calling, receive the training, the equipping that they need to do what God has called them to do. And we have no limits. We have no denominational restrictions. We have no denominational backing. We're just a, a group of people that love God. Our demographic is yeah, I, I, you know, our primary age is like young adult. You know what I mean? Like the mm -hmm. primary demographic and population of our church is from about 18 to 35. And they're hungry, man. They're hungry. So I'm looking forward to feeding them every week. And God has been good. So, yeah, it's been good. Wow. Man, that 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 is absolutely powerful. And I'm so excited to hear that. You know, I've, I've you know, had the opportunity opportunity, really the privilege of, you know, ministering there at NBC a couple of times in the past. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you know, it, it, it just feels like home, you know, every time, 100%. you know, just, you know, just the powerful atmosphere of, of, of worship that really welcomes the presence of God, hosts the glory of God. So I'm excited just to see all that NBC really will become in this next season. Absolutely. Now, now also, uh, you have uh, some tremendous resources. You've got some books. You have some uh, really handbooks that you training manuals that you put out that have really been blessed in the body of Christ. I wanted to just see if you could take a moment and just kind of share some of those with us where folks can find them. Because I'm sure after we have this conversation today, you know, people are going to be really wanting more. And so if you could share that with us as well. 
yeah, I'm knocking books down in my office right now because I, <laughs> I got them laying around. I got them laying around everywhere. But uh, yeah, man, you know, uh, the Lord has really blessed us to be able to write. I think we've written 16 books now. We've published mm-hmm. 16 books now and both, you know, books and manuals. So not only things, you know, for your leisure, but things for your learning. And uh, yeah, I mean, everything from prophetic manuals. This is prophetic science right here, mm-hmm. which I love. And this is part two and part 2.1. But all of my resources are available on Amazon.com. You can get some exclusive material if you go to my website, brianmeadows.com, brianmeadows.tv, whatever. But all of my books are available on, on Amazon. Just go to Amazon, search my name, B R Y A N. M-E-A-D-O-W-S, and they can find everything there. And also we have a free app. We have an app that's available wow. on the app store. You can download it. It's free. It's got hours and hours of content for the listener. And then for the mentee, it's got everything that your heart could desire. So just go to the app store again, type in my name, Brian Meadows, B-R-Y-A-N-M-E-A-D-O-W-S, and they can find the app. It's free. They can download it. And all the content is right there. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Well, uh, I just want us to kind of, as we get into this conversation about removing distractions and really building an intimate life with Jesus. Of course, this is the Dimensions podcast. And so we're really trying to have, you know, multifaceted conversations. So I want to start our conversation here as we talk about uh, removing distractions and building intimacy with Jesus. If we're going to do that, right, we have to know who Jesus is. You know, yeah. like why, why, why is he so important that we yeah. would change our lives for, that, that, that we would completely reconfigure our futures for his pleasure, for his glory? And so, Apostle Meadows, can you share with us, from your perspective, who is Jesus and how were you introduced to Jesus? Yeah, well, who is Jesus? He is the creator of heaven and earth. He is the Lord of the cosmos. He's the King of Kings. He's the God of gods. He's El Elyon, God most high. He is the creator of all matter, space, and time. Who is Jesus? My encounter with Jesus started, of course, you know, as a little child, I grew up you know, around church, but really kind of outside of the understanding of the faith. I didn't really get what was going on, but I was inquisitive and I was curious. And so I read a lot. When I was eight years old, I remember I climbed into a Baptist pulpit and I tried to preach. I said, man, I'm going to act like I'm a preacher and stuff. And when I did that, a deacon came up and yelled at me. He said, get down from there and snatched me, literally snatched me from the pulpit. And that day, you know, I think a bitterness entered my heart as it relates to the church. It was just an anger, you know, that entered my heart as it relates to the church. And I was already spiritually curious. So they just sent me off on the deep end. I was practicing martial arts. Most of my friends were Buddhists. So I actually became a Buddhist when I was eight years old. And I practiced Buddhism until I was 16. When I was 16, May 2004, I had a visitation from the Lord. Literally, it was an open vision. I was awake, but it was like my imagination was hijacked, like I was in a trance. And this vision was superimposed on reality. Like I could see it, but I could also see through it. And I saw a man standing in front of me. I couldn't see who he was because it was almost like he was standing in front of the sun. It's like Mm -hmm. light was beaming from all around him, which made him kind of look like a shadow. So I couldn't see any physical features or anything, but my spirit knew exactly who he was. And I said, he looked at me and he said, son, I have a great work for you to do. And I said, Lord, if you're going to use me, use all of me. And when I said that immediately, I came to, it's like I snapped back to reality and I realized that I was in the presence of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And I tell everybody, I said, when I was in the presence of Jesus, he called me son Mm -hmm. because everyone is a son in the presence of Jesus. He does not distinguish you from a son, a slave, a sinner. He calls Mm -hmm. everyone son. That's number two. That's number one. Number two is I called him Lord. I'm talking about involuntarily. It was no conscious awareness of who he was. My soul knew who he was. And this is what the scripture means when it says every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. See, we think that that is a conquering thing, like God's going to conquer the world and their knee going bow. No, that's a consequence of his lordship. Everything that he has created 
in his presence, they have to bow. It don't matter whether it's the blade of grass, whether it's the lily of the field, whether it's the star, it don't matter. Whatever he has created in his presence, it has to bow or, su or, or submit to his lordship. And that was my first encounter with the person, with the presence, with the risen Lord Jesus Christ. And I've had three other encounters since then, but he is, the scripture talks about uh, Jesus being the image of the invisible God. The scripture says that no man has seen God. John chapter four says that God is spirit. That word, in, that word spirit not only means breath, it also means incorporable. It's not materialized. It's not matter. It is invisible. And so no man has seen God. But in order for God to show us himself, in order for God to manifest himself, to reveal himself, he formed a body, right? That council called the Godhead said, make us a body. And then the scripture says that it pleased God that the fullness of the Godhead mm. would dwell in that body. And then, of course, we would, be, we would be hailed, John says in John chapter 1, verse number 14, that we would behold the glory of him as he was tabernacled among us, as he was Emmanuel among us. So that is who Jesus is. Jesus is the ancient of days. He's Elohim, the creator of the universe that manifests himself in a tangible, physical, temporal manifestation, which is the body of Jesus Christ. So that is who Jesus is. Wow. So, so powerful. As you were sharing, my God, I just got to thinking about even according there to John 1, you know, where it tells us that in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, and the word became flesh uh, there, as you, as, you, as you just said. And I think what's so powerful is because it speaks to the preexistence of Jesus Christ, the preeminence of Jesus Christ, that he existed even before he came in the flesh. Of course, That's there are right. different, you know, theological concepts and there, there's these questions. Well, when did the son become the son? Did right, it right, happen right. when when he came, you know, when, when, when he was conceived, you know, there in the body of Mary in her womb? Did it happen at his baptism? These different concepts right, that, right, 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 you know, right, really right. the church has debated over the course of centuries. But I think very clearly, very strongly as you speak to him being the image of the invisible God and him being that pre-existent word, it was, there is that relationship. Thank you, God, that that the son and the father have had. I love how according to John 1, I, I think it's verse 18, it tells us, you know, as, as, as you began there, no one has seen God at any time, but but the son who who is himself God. And and is in closest relationship with the Father. He has made him known, and so Jesus, being the image of God, the revelation of God, the manifestation of God. When we begin to talk about removing distractions, I think it's so important that we center that reality of who Jesus is as pre-existent, as the one in closest relationship with the Father. So that then, when Jesus reveals the Father to us, he right. does so because he has an eternal credibility because he right. has always been. And so thank you so much for just really sharing that apostle. And I love also even what you said as you began to share your story um, yeah. about how you really encountered Jesus in a real way for the first time when you were 16 years old, how you saw him, you had that yeah. apostolic encounter with him. And I think that the reason why that's so important is because we will never we will never move past the things that keep us distant from God That's if right. we do not really perceive the glory and the beauty of God. That's if right. if, okay. if, if we okay. don't get a picture of how glorious and beautiful and eternal and significant that he is, if we yeah. don't get that picture, then we're going to have a hard time moving past things that have occupied our attention in the past. Well, you look, I, I want to say this, you know, when we're talking about the pre, because I think Jesus is the perfect example and template about overcoming distractions, both mm -hmm. on a personal level, on a cosmic level, on a purpose level and on a destiny level, because I love how we're talking about the pre-existent, uh, imminent nature of Jesus Christ, because even before he was Emmanuel, even before he was given the term or the name Yeshua, he was the word. Right. John mm -hmm. tells us that there are three that bear record and witness in heaven. 
but you have the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And the Bible talks about, and there's three that bear record to that one. You know, the, mm-hmm. you know, the, you know, that's a whole nother conversation, right? <laughs> but let's talk about the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. The mm-hmm. Word is the expression of the Father. Think about you, right? We have our source, our father, or we have our soul, right? As a man thinketh, so is he. But the scripture says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You have the mm-hmm. heart, but there, there's no expression. You have to have expression in order for wow. you to know I love you. I can have it in my heart, but unless I express it, express it. Jesus is the word. He is mm-hmm. the expression of God. Everything that God expressed. That's why the scripture talks about Without that word, nothing came into existence that came into existence. Mm. No sun, no moon, no star. All of that was through the power of Jesus, which is the word, which is the expression of God. When Mm. God expresses himself. Now watch this. Now, we would think, and from the Old Testament, the Old Testament shows us that flesh is a distraction to expression. For the creator, for the entrepreneur, for the business owner, you want to create a business idea. You want to express yourself. But let's be honest, the flesh is a distraction, whether it's Mm -hmm. relationships, whether it's money, materialism, whether it's health, whatever the case may be. And so for a long time, the church has preached the flesh as a distraction. But what Jesus shows us is that you can overcome the distraction of the flesh in Mm -hmm. the flesh. Like you don't have to, it's, 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 it's not this thing where, you know, I, I got to ignore my flesh. No, 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 no. You have to utilize your flesh or you have to mm. tame your flesh, buffet your flesh, discipline your flesh so you can then use it to express what God wow. has called you to express. But I, I wanted to just say that because I wow. think this, this entire conversation about distraction, there are so many people that are distracted by fleshly things. And Jesus shows us that the flesh should not be a distraction. It should be a tool to Mm. help you express what God has given. Wow. Wow. (laughs) That's so powerful. That makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Because, because I think that it, it adds so much significance and I think it really gives clarity to even understand it from a new Testament perspective, the importance of the resurrection, because this whole dualism that says soul, spirit, good body is bad. That whole thing would suggest that essentially our bodies or this fleshly coat that we've put on is really a prison. Right. And that's um, a very Greco Roman. That's a very uh-huh, Greco yeah. Roman. Oh, this wretched body who right. shall deliver from this body. You know, that's a very Greco Roman uh thought and concept. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Jesus introduces something different into that Greco Roman context. In a sense, he redeems the body. One hundred percent. He glorifies it. This um, is the so- temple. Of the yeah. Holy Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and I think that's important for us to know. It's important for us to know that there is a redemption. Thank you, Jesus. Because many of us in our stories, when we think about stuff we've done in our flesh, that's things right. we have done in our bodies, we can begin to assume the posture and the perspective that there is nothing redeemable about it. But God cares so much about our physical state that even though, of course, there is a a track or a trajectory of corruption that ultimately leads to every human thing experiencing death, yet the resurrection says not only is your spirit going to rise, but Mm -hmm. your body is going to rise. He's going to give you a new bodily, a new fleshly experience and embodied experience where you will know God, not just in your spirit, but you'll know him in your body. You will experience him in your, in your enfleshed life, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so with that being said, as we talk about removing distractions, can can you share with us, Apostle, what are some of the ways that mm-hmm. our bodies or the flesh operates that are in rebellion against the revelation of who Jesus Christ is? And how can we begin to bring those things into subjection to who Jesus is so we can grow in him? Well, it's so funny because I was about to say this. It's very, it's very important when we talk about the body and flesh. There's one scripture that says there is no good thing Mm -hmm. that dwells in the flesh. But then there's another scripture that says God has put treasure 
mm. in earthen vessel. Oh, wait, okay, that's a dichotomy. Wait, is, is it good stuff in the flesh or is it not good stuff in the flesh? So the flesh, I want you to see it as like an epidermis, like a level. Like don't, when I say flesh, of course, we're talking about the entire material or the entire matter compound of the person. So, so that's mm. organs, all that different kind of stuff. So we're talking about that component. But when we say the flesh, like we like the body, the soma is different than the flesh. So of course we got pneuma and then we have suke psyche and then we have the soma. But even when you deal with the soma, we're not just talking about the physical body, which is organs, mm -hmm. we're talking about the natural man. Mm -hmm. And the natural man and the physical body are two different things. There's nothing wrong with the natural man, mm -hmm. but there is corruption in the flesh in that Adamic nature. Now, mm. I'm saying all of that to say, one of the ways that we start the process of buffeting our flesh, mastering our flesh, so that it doesn't become a distraction is by focusing on the treasure that God has placed in earth and vessel. Wow. I think so many times the church places so much emphasis on the flesh instead of place, placing emphasis on the gifts that God has placed Jesus. in the flesh. Because if you focus on the development of your gifts, you ain't got time to do stupid stuff. If you're focusing on the development and the training and the equipping and the education of your gifts, if you're taking classes and you're bettering yourself, you're trying to go to real estate class and you're doing this, you don't have time for your flesh to run and to rule your life. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the things we have to think about is what part of our body or what part of our lives are we feeding? Are we feeding the soma? Are we feeding the suke? Are we are we feeding the pneuma? What level mm. are we feeding? The scripture says that if you sow to the flesh, from the flesh you will reap corruption. So if the only thing, and again, corruption is not always. The scripture says that temporal things are corruptible. If you mm. have a phone, over time it is going to corrupt. It, it's not talking about evil. It just means that it loses its shine. It loses mm. its value. And so what I'm saying, even if you're investing in the flesh in a good way, even if it's in a good way, that's still tenfold or thirtyfold. That's still thirtyfold. Mm. Even if I work out, you have to keep working out because cookies still going to look good. Cakes still going to look good. So that's still just thirtyfold. Let's say you invest in the suitcase. Right. Mental and emotional health. You go to counseling. That mm. doesn't stop trauma from happening. Even if you go to counseling and you get whole mentally and emotionally, you can still have a loss. You can still have a breakup. You can still mm. have something that now requires counseling again. But it's only the scripture says if you sow to the spirit from the spirit, you'll reap life. And so mm. one of the things I think we have to invest in our spiritual development. I think we have to invest in our, whether if we feel like we're called to ministry, if we're called to the miraculous missions, whatever it is, the more we invest in that, I think the more focused our lives will be and we won't be as distracted. What's up, family? Listen, I have some really exciting news to share with you. On April the 26th, 2024, I'm going to be releasing my brand new full length album. It's called night vision uh we've been talking about the kingship of jesus christ here on the dimensions podcast but now i want you to have a soundtrack for it i can't wait for you to hear this album for yourself it's inspired by daniel chapter 7 uh, where the prophet has a vision of the kingdoms and empires of the world but then he sees god the ancient of days take his seat in the heavenly courtroom and he transfers the powers of the kingdoms and empires into the hands of one who looks like a son of man one who we find out in the new testament is none other than jesus christ he is king of kings he is lord of lords and even in the darkness of our world he is worthy of our worship and that's what the night vision album is all about so listen put it in your calendar give yourself a reminder set an alarm whatever you have to do because i believe that on april 26th god is going to give you night vision i want to speak just a little bit about that concept of kingdom because i think it's so important when we talk about keeping ourselves busy not 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 for the sake of busy work not for the sake mm -hmm. of just saying that we've got stuff going on but rather right. keeping our minds and our hearts occupied with the things of god beholding him seeing him but also seeing the world seeing the mission seeing the assignment as he would have us to see it 
I think it's important that we that we talk even just briefly about this notion of kingdom. Uh, what is the kingdom? What is the kingdom agenda? What is the kingdom mandate? What is the kingdom mission? And how is it that God has called each of us in myriad ways to really participate in that kingdom mission? 100%. The kingdom or the kingdom of God is God's reign, his rule, and his government in a given locale, whether that be a person, a heart, whether that be a family, whether that be a church, whether that be a region, a nation, a generation. It just means that God's influence is the predominant influencing agent in that organization or in that era, that generation, or in that person. Jesus said, lo, the kingdom of God is not here or there, for lo, the kingdom of God is within you. And I think you got to clarify terms like kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is the actual place where his throne is, where he reigns. It is the superior place in the spiritual world. It is the top of the totem pole, the top of the mm. food chain as relates to all spiritual places and spiritual, you know, all, the, all of that. And of course, we know that the heavens cannot contain God, that mm. God does not live in, in heaven, that the heavens live in God. And so all of that mm. is contained in God, right? The kingdom of God is the same way the kingdom of God is in us. The kingdom of heaven is in him. So when mm. we come into the kingdom of heaven, that's why in the book of Revelation, we never see them. You know why? Because we in them. You can't see wow. them because we in them, right? So, so, but the kingdom of God is the literal rule, reign, the influence, the mind, the precepts, the concepts. It is the presence of God that rules, that takes residence and precedent, mm. precedent in a particular place. And once the kingdom of God is established, it allows the culture of the kingdom of God to become normal in that place. And mm -hmm. the culture of the kingdom of God is important because this is what we see in the book of Genesis when God established the garden. That word, when it's the garden, it just means it was the prosperity of God manifested. It was the purpose of God and the pleasure of God mm -hmm. manifested. It was everything that God is and everything that he wanted manifested. And it created the perfect environment for the both the body, the soul, and the assignment of Adam, when Adam sins, that place, that government, that 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 order is taken away, and so it, it now becomes hard for Adam to establish or to continue to advance the purposes of God. It's not impossible; he can do it, wow. but it's going to be by the sweat of his brow. He, mm -hmm. he can do it, but it's going to be hard. It's going to be rough, and so God knows that there is a suitable environment for man. You know, remember when Moses said, Lord, if we go up, please don't take your presence. We don't want to go if your presence don't go with us. What is it that distinguishes us from all the other people on the face, the face of the planet? And it was the glory of God. It was the presence mm -hmm. of God. So so anyway, so that's that's what the kingdom of God is. It, it, it is the rule and the reign of God. And it gives us the ability to establish the culture of the kingdom of God. And I think that is the goal. In order for that to happen, God. He breathes into every person the gifts, the potential, the anointing, mm. the graces, and the wiring that we need to do our unique assignment to advance his agenda in the earth. And the more people we can get doing that, the more the kingdom of God can be established, the more we can start to see peace and righteousness and joy, mm. not just in heaven, but in the physical plane that we live in, in the earth, in our generation. We can see a level of righteousness and morality that we haven't seen. And so that's the goal. And that's why we continue to preach Jesus, because Jesus is the door, right? Mm. Us preaching Jesus pricks the hearts of men. <clears throat> It convicts them of sin and it gives them the keys of the kingdom to walk through that door. And in my father's house, there are many mansions. Right. So now is our job to develop them and get them healed and get them delivered and to teach them wisdom, how to be a good husband, how to be a good wife. So they can then raise up their children in the admonition of the Lord. And they begin to do the same thing, affect other people for Jesus. And wow. if we are all doing this, we can begin to see a change in our generation and in our planet. Wow. That's that's. That's so powerful. It's a lot, man. It's a lot. Yeah. But 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 it's so exciting because I think yeah. that what what this is doing is it is helping us to recognize that there is so much more, thank you, Jesus, 100%. than than that struggle, that issue, that problem, that, that yeah. secret sin, you know, that 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 thing that easily besets you. There is a great big kingdom out there. That's right. <laughs> there's a there's a there's a there's a there's a brave new world out there that that Jesus in his kingship in his lordship 
in his dominion that he welcomes us into. He welcomes us into a new life. I got to thinking about this as as you were sharing uh, that scripture, I believe is Romans 8, where the Apostle Paul says that the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. And what it just made me think about, you know, as as we talk about the kingdom, and of course, the kingdom has a king, his name is Jesus. But as as we think about that, I think sometimes the kingdom can take on this kind of kind of metaphysical, otherworldly kind of conception in our minds. And certainly it is otherworldly, you know, yes. his kingdom is not of this world. But I think the the power of what Jesus has come to do, like when he says, if I cast out demons by the by the by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Right. And so it is a kingdom that is not of this world, but it is a kingdom that has now broken into this world, that it would change this world, that ultimately what's going to happen, the kingdoms of, of this world shall become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. and He will reign forever. And so. Really, as we as we think about kingdom, as we think about this concept of law, the law of the spirit of life that sets you free from the law of sin and death, God was showing me this, that very often the cycles that we find ourselves in is because there are laws that are at work. When they say this to me, I pop off like this. When this happens in my life, I run to this to self-medicate. When that thing, when that trauma is triggered, this is my response. There are laws that are at work within our bodies, laws that work within our flesh that literally tie and tether us to certain perspectives, ways of thinking, ways of living. These are laws. But what's powerful is that in Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life has now come to supersede those laws. This is kind of the way it it, it come to my mind. You know, we think about our system here in the uh, U.S. You know, we've got, you know, you've got local courts, municipal courts, uh, you've got state courts, you've got federal courts, and then you've got the Supreme Court. Right. And so all these different jurors are empowered to interpret the law in certain ways that are specific to their jurisdiction. But there is a process whereby their interpretation or their ruling, their judgment can be appealed to a higher court that can then render judgment based on a higher law because the higher court has to interpret everything that happens in the nation based on the Constitution. And so Jesus Christ, in instituting the kingdom of God on earth, he reveals, as it were, and institutes a cosmic constitution, right, that supersedes every other law that might be working within our members, every other law that might be working within our bloodlines, every other law that might be working with in our regions, the law of God, the constitution of God, which is the word of God, who is Jesus Christ, he supersedes every other law so that now, no matter what law we found ourselves constricted by, Jesus comes and says, no, the law of the spirit of life supersedes the law of sin and death so that now you can walk in your kingdom purpose. You can walk in intimacy with me. You don't have to be bound. And so that's the power of deliverance. It's the power of healing because it literally brings God's people into the reality of the law of God. Thank you, Jesus. Into the reality of the law of the kingdom, the law of the spirit of life. And so how important would you say it is, Apostle, that in our efforts to remove distractions, that we go through and we undergo the processes of healing, the processes of of breakthrough, so that we can experience all that is the kingdom of God? Man, let me tell you this. For a lot of believers, deliverance is a distraction. And I don't want to say deliverance, but demons, the fact that they are not delivered, their own deliverance is a distraction. If they can't be quiet for two seconds without hearing voices in their head, telling them they're nothing, you bad, you're this, you're that. So one of the ways that you, 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 you gain a focused life, one of the ways that you eliminate distractions is by getting deliverance. 
is yeah. by casting out devils, is by ridding yourself of every evil or contrary energy of the Holy Spirit so that you can be free from all contrary voices and yeah. anything that would try to take your attention away from Jesus Christ. And I think it's important, man. I think it's, I think it's of utmost importance if you are going to be productive. Productivity demands focus, right? Mm. But focus demands freedom. Wow. Focus demands freedom. Most people that can't focus are bound in some way, right? Mm -hmm. they're, 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 they're bound. Their attention is bound here. Their, their attention is bound there. So they, it's hard for them to focus. So mm -hmm. one of the things I think that we must do is priori prioritize our deliverance. Like you said, our mental, our emotional health, mental and emotional healing. But even that takes focus. You know, this is why, you know, James talks about uh, in the book of James, he talks about the double minded man. He says the mm -hmm. double-minded man is unstable in not some of his ways, but all of his ways. So let not that man think he can ask God for anything, right? Wow. And so I think that if 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 you if you're gonna be focused, if you're gonna be productive, that's gonna take a single mind. Jesus said it like this: if your eye be single, your mm -hmm. body is full of light. So the only way your body is gonna be full of light, revelation, wisdom, and joy and peace. You're going to have to be single eyed or focused. Wow. And that means you're going to have to deal with your double mindedness and double mindedness is the derivative of the demonic. Right. You don't have wow. a double mind just because you like, oh, I don't know what to do. There's one. There's a difference between hesitation and then being paralyzed by fear or paralyzed by confusion. God is not the author of confusion. Mm. So I think deliverance is one of the ways that we get focused. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> so, OK, so. Let's press a little further there, Apostle. What if I got delivered, mm -hmm. the demons were cast out, I had the session, I went to the altar, I did all of that. Um, and I love how in our generation, there's this big push. We say deliverance plus therapy. I went to therapy. I did it all. But then I was triggered and I went back. What do I do now? Well, I mean, I think that sometimes we're looking for things to be a season, a stage, but it's really a supplement, right? Like there's vitamins that mm -hmm. I take, like, oh, like during COVID, you know, everybody was on the elderberry and zinc, mm -hmm. you know, everybody was taking elderberry and zinc. Well, I still take elderberry and zinc. I don't have COVID. Nobody's talking about COVID, but it became a supplement. It became mm. something that was a part of my diet so that I didn't have to worry about it if I ever got sick. It was something that was just part. So it's the same thing. I think that we wow. think, okay, I'm dealing with something. Let me go to therapy. Ooh, I'm good. Let me stop. Why? But hear, hear me. Most people treat God like that. Most people treat prayer like that. It's like they don't pray until something happens and then they pray. But the moment the pressure is alleviated, they go back to normal again. You have to make prayer a supplement. And I don't even want to say a supplement. It has to become a pillar. It has to become a practice. Mm -hmm. It has to become a discipline. See, when I think about the practices of Christianity coming from Buddhism, the practices of Christianity were disciplines. They weren't just something you did. It was something that you practiced. It was something that you, the practice in and of itself was worship, not just mm -hmm. the act. So it wasn't me just praying that was worship. It was me preparing to pray that was worship. Wow. It was me getting, you know what I'm saying? It was me putting out my stuff and getting my, all of that mm -hmm. was a part of worship. And, and so it became a discipline. It became something that I did to discipline my spirit and temper my spirit. So I think that we can't just see the end, like oh, I'm praying for something, but I, I think we have to make sure that these things are a normal part of our day, a normal part of our diet. The same way we have a physical diet, we should have a soul diet, whether it's mm -hmm. the books that we're reading, the conversations that we're having, and the counseling, the therapy, or the deliverance, and we should have a spiritual diet as well. <clears throat> Jesus. <laughs> wow. I, yeah, I, I know that there are so many people who who that just blessed in a major way because it's not just a stage. It's not just a season, but it's a supplement. It's something that we commit to for the long haul. Yeah. And it, 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 it is not just an event. Now I'm free. Now I'm healed. Now I'm okay. You know, now I can run on. No, it's, it's something that we continue to practice that we continue to put into place 
that 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 we continue to work out, like the Apostle Paul said, to work out your salvation continually, work out your salvation with fear and with trembling, for it is God who is continually working in you. And so we thank you, Jesus. We continue to work out what God is continually working in. And Amen. so there's an ongoing process that it is an ongoing life. So I think that that just freed, you know, just really freed a lot of people to know that even if you've taken steps forward, but then you took steps back and now you might be discouraged and you might feel like you're damaged goods. You know, you might right. feel like, you know, I can't really walk this Christ life out the way that God has called me to do. And maybe God has rejected me. Maybe God wants nothing to do with me. All those things that the enemy yeah. whispers in our ear. Um, I believe that Apostle Brian Meadows just helped some of us get free. Uh, to recognize and to understand and to know this is a matter not just of season but of supplementation. It's a lifestyle. It's uh, a lifestyle. We make prayer a pillar. We walk in this thing and we do so until Jesus returns. Wow, wow. I want to ask you this, and, and we're going to close here in just a couple moments. I've been so blessed to have this conversation with you, no, Apostle. Good, man. Thank you. But, but, what what I want to ask is this, right? So in Hebrews 12, 1, and I think this kind of helps to tie together so much of what we've discussed, whoever the writer is, <laughs> uh, says, seeing that 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 we're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. Mm -hmm. And I actually want to put a pin there for one quick second, because I think some of us apostle in our generation, we, we are such a self-sufficient generation. I think that it happens to a fault. Because we are more technologically advanced than anybody in the world has ever been, because we have more immediate access to knowledge than anyone in the world ever has, sometimes we begin to think that there is a certain generational supremacy, right, mm. that, um, that somehow we have moved further than our ancestors, we've moved further than our foreparents. But I love how the scripture says, no, 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 consider right? Those who have come before you consider their faith, consider their way of life, consider their example and glean from it. So he says, we're, we're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. So I want to encourage somebody. Yeah. You might have something to learn from that praying grandmother. She may not have finished high school, right? Yes. She may not have all the degrees and all the learning and the knowledge, but there's something, there's a deposit for us to receive from generations. But he says, let's lay aside every weight and the sin yeah. that easily besets us, the sin that entangles us, the sin that distracts us, the sin that keeps us locked up and bound and let us run with patience. The race that's set before us looking to Jesus. He's the start and the finish, the founder and perfecter of our faith, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. He despised right. the shame. He focused on the joy. What was the joy that we would know the father? What was the joy that we would have eternal life, which is knowing the father and the son, the joy that we would walk in kingdom purpose, that we would live out that which God intended for us when he made us it says that he despised the cross or rather he endured the cross. He despised the shame. So as we close the apostle Meadows, if, if you can just speak here for a couple moments about the importance of endurance, the importance mm -hmm. of continuing because removing distractions just like as as you as you told us with prayer with deliverance even with therapy it's not just a season it's a supplement right. those things are processes so similarly removing distractions and building intimacy with Jesus is not just something that we do for a few months it's a lifestyle so can That's you right. talk about the importance of enduring in Christ enduring yeah. despite the things that we might face Man, you know, we have a generation that worships the idol of success. Um, and we think that everything should look good. Everything should feel good. Everything should um, sound good. And that's just not the reality of growth. Growth is messy. Uh, growth wow. is excruciating. Growth is hard. And in order for anybody to become what God has called them to be and survive the process of growth, it takes endurance. It mm -hmm. takes you learning how to hold on. That's why I believe Jacob was so significant when he wrestled with that angel until the breaking of day. You know, he said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me, until I change, until I see transformation. I'm not going to let this thing go. Jesus said, man, I want to find people that can put their hand to the plow and they yeah. wouldn't look back. Even when Elijah was looking for Elisha, he looked for somebody that's hand was to the plow, looking wow. for somebody that had a level of consistency, a level of, a level of, 
uh, stick to itiveness, a level of long suffering. You mm. know, there's a scripture that says, endure hardness as a good soldier. It's not even just the fact that you have to endure. The scripture talks about how you endure. Mm. Because I, I, I learned this, that patience is not how long you wait. Patience is how you wait while you wait. Wow. Because you can wait, but be impatient. So patience is not waiting. Patience mm. is maintaining the positivity of your spirit, maintaining mm. your, your, your presence of gratitude and thanksgiving, your, your sense of awe, wonder, and humility while you wait. Not saying, man, how long is it going to be? They should have gave me this by now. You're not patient. That's not, you're not patient just because you're waiting. It's how you wait. And so one of the things I teach people, you know, we are priests. The scripture says that we are a kingdom of priests. We are priests after the order of Melchizedek. And unlike the Levitical priests, that walked through the valley of the shadow of death, they had to, you know, kind of peruse and tiptoe between the holy place and the most holy place mm. and the holies of holies. We don't have to go through a physical temple, right? Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So instead of navigating curtains, we're navigating modems. Instead of navigating mm. the altar of incense, we're navigating our ambition. Instead wow. of stepping around the menorah, we're stepping around our own wisdom to find the wisdom of God. Jesus. And so the priest is constantly navigating. Is this me? Is this God? Am I sincere? Am I humble? Am I being braggadocious? Am I being but like it's, wow. it's constantly doing this. And that is the art of the priest, right? Even if I do something, why am I doing it? Am I doing it mm -hmm. to get glory? Am I doing it to give glory? Like you're constantly navigating the waters, right? And so I think that that is one of the most important things is that we remain sincere. Sincerity gives you the strength of righteousness that helps you endure. But mm -hmm. when you know you're not right, it becomes easy for you to let something go. When you know that something mm -hmm. is not right, it becomes easy for you to abandon ship. See, endurance is not always uh, a product of strength. Many times it's a product of righteousness. Like it's not always a product mm -hmm. of physical strength. Sometimes it's a product of soul forti or character. Like, you know, uh, you know, the word dunamis actually means excellence of character. It wasn't wow. just miraculous power. It was excellence of character. So, yeah, man, I think that really I, I think that navigating our sincerity, our ambition, that is what brings us into a place of righteousness, not justification. I'm not talking about justification. I'm talking about righteousness, knowing that you are right before God, not necessarily just because of the sacrifice and the blood of Jesus Christ, but because of your intent, your motive, mm. your, your, your heart posture, right? So I think that's the first thing. Um, but then the second thing is faithfulness, right? Uh, you need the heart posture because that's going to give you the confidence that I'm doing the right thing. But after that, you now need the work ethic. You know, mm -hmm. this Sunday, this Sunday at our church, last Sunday, I started a series called Minding My Business. This week, I'm doing the second installment of that message, and it's called Office Hours. And the entire wow. purpose of this message is if you want something to change, you're going to have to work. And we have this entire dichotomy, this entire argument of faith versus works. Man, look, we ain't got time. We ain't got time. We ain't got time. Look. <laughs> I'm 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 gonna give you this, Jeffrey. I'm I'm because this yes, is a sir. podcast. I'm gonna give you this, but I'm preaching this on Sunday, and I've never heard this, but the Lord gave me this, gave me this. So, you know, we've been with this whole dichotomy, this whole war against faith versus works. But the Lord told me this. Watch me. Faith and works are not opposites. Mm. Faith and works are not enemies. Here we go. Mm. Faith and works are genders. Wow. The Lord gave me this. Now hear me. When we think of genders, don't just think. Don't just think male, female, the spectrum of genders, because now we're coming up with a whole bunch of genders and pronouns <laughs> and stuff. But understand, in every kingdom, there's general, there's there's genders. Think about the vegetative kingdom. Even flowers, there are female parts of flowers and male mm. parts of flowers, right? Think about in electronics, you have a male plug yeah. and you have a female plug, you know, like when you're doing stuff with like XLR cables yeah. and microphones and stuff like that. So male and female or genders are not just found in biology, it's found in other industries as well. So when I say gender, don't think just sex alone, think function and role wow. because faith is the female. It is the job of faith to get pregnant, but works is the male. It's the job of mm. works to push the baby out. So you have wow. faith, which is the female. Faith speaks. 
It talks. Works don't say nothing. Work just yeah. work because work is the masculine and you need wow. the feminine and the masculine. You need the female and the male to come together. Faith without works is dead being alone. So that's how I'm going to wow. it Sunday. I, I, I'm working this thing. <laughs> that thing going to be crazy. Man, it's so <laughs> powerful. And, and yeah. by the time this airs, I think folks are going to be able to even find that message. So we're going to have to put it yeah. in the show notes because we definitely want Please. people to just really receive that insight. That's so powerful. Apostle Meadows, what a privilege and an honor it is to call you brother. Uh, just to know you, uh, to be able to glean from the grace that's on your life. We have been so blessed just to receive from the deposit uh, that you've released today. And so thank you so much. Before we close, Apostle, can you let us know where we can find you on social media? Yeah, man. Everywhere it's Apostle B, right? You can find me on Instagram at It's Apostle B, Twitter at It's Apostle B, Facebook. Just type in Brian Meadows. You can go to my website, brianmeadows.tv, brianmeadows.com, brianmeadows.net. Again, we have an app that's free on the App Store. Just search my name, Brian Meadows, B-R-Y-A-N-M-E-A-W-S. And you can go to Amazon, find all of our books there just by searching our name. Connect with us. We can't wait to see you grow in the admonition of the Lord. Awesome. Thank you, Apostle. Thank you, brother. Family, I hope that you enjoyed uh, my conversation with Apostle Brian Meadows. And if you did, can you do us a favor? Leave a five-star review and share this podcast. Let people know that we're coming together so that we can grow in the knowledge of God and the revelation of Christ. Until next time.